Welcome to the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast, where our mission is to help you learn and grow by sharing the tips, ideas, tricks, and more that we learn from speaking with top producing real estate agents around the country every single day. I'm Matt Benelli here with Ninja Coaching founder and owner Garrett Fry. And although we focus a lot on real estate, this podcast is not just for real estate agents. It is for anyone who is looking to better their business and increase their income per hour in order to enjoy all of the things that life has to offer. So prepare to take in a lot of value that you can put into action in your business and your life. Enjoy the show. Well, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for tuning back into us. As you know, Matt and I uh, get to talk to a ton of people all the time. And one thing I'm loving right now is with doing uh, these podcasts with Matt is, you know, I get these great kind of moments of clarity when I'm talking to somebody out there, you know, around the United States. And you know, here's somebody that has like a, a either a problem or a, a, you know, a win that they're going through right now. And I always document those and I always come back to them and go like, okay, so what's the bigger story around these things? How does this relate to all the other people out there? And the big one that came up for me this last week was um, belief systems. And belief systems, we cover in ninja selling all the time. And belief systems cover so many pieces. It's not just, you know, what income you make. It's not just how the world, you know, happens to you. It's not just <laughs> your internal core stuff and what you believe of how, the, you know, how life happens. But it really does predict the results that you have around you. I would love to go down this topic. So Matt, are you in? I'm totally in. I think this is probably one of the things that we spend a good majority, if you had to like chunk down the percentage time that we spend on coaching calls over the course of a, a client working with a client, this is a big percentage talking about belief systems. And this is also a topic that we use as ways to get people over the edge, to help people get to the next level or to make a comeback or whatever it is. It always goes back to the belief system first so that then they can take action to see the results. You're right. I mean, I do spend the majority of my time when working with people is on the belief system. Larry said it very early on. He said, you know, there's there's a couple people that they've watched the ninja systems not be able to work for. I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but he said there's only a handful of people that the ninja systems won't work for. One is if you have an unpleasing personality. <laughs> and he always said it as, if you brighten the room by leaving the room, <laughs> ninja will not work for you. And I always love that because there are certain people I've coached through the years, I'm like, oh, I know what the problem is. and it's nothing we can fix you know it's not like i can sit here and say hey you need to change your attitude and it's just not that simple but that's one reason number two is they talk too much and they don't listen and they're not asking questions they're just talking Uh, i think a lot of people out there know real estate agents that just talk Mm -hmm. and talk and talk and you're like they won't shut up and people will go like, oh, that's because they're in sales. You know, they're, they just want to keep talking, talking, talking. But that will kill Ninja is when we're not asking questions and we're not listening. We need to be listening more than we're talking. So that's the other one. Uh, the last one is the belief system. What I have found is that uh, the belief system is very, very, very controllable. We have a lot of ways that we can manipulate it. We can change the beliefs. We can adjust the beliefs. A lot of people think, though, that it's not you know, something that can be manipulated or changed. And that's also belief system too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that's your belief system working against your own changeability of your belief system. Yeah. I mean, we, we have people that just dig their heels in and go just, that's who I am, or that's just how the world works. So that's just, you know, then they dig in on that kind of stuff. And it's like, well, there's, there's nothing we can do about it if you decide that there's, you know, if your belief system says that there's no control. But the cool thing is, and Matt, both of you and I have seen it in so many ways, is that it is so moldable and it is so changeable. We just need to kind of, first off, open people's eyes up to what else is out there? What's happening for other people? And that's what I have found over my years of coaching. It's why I share people's stories all the time and share other people's realities is because the minute you can see somebody else's reality, it makes you step back and go, really? Like, that's actually possible? 
Yeah, evidence, evidence of, hey, this works, and look at where this person was, changed the belief system, this happened, it's real. And I think there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of books and movies out there. I mean, the, the Secret obviously comes to mind when we talk about belief systems and you know what you think about, you bring about, and phrases like that. And, and it's true. But I think when we read certain books and stuff, when there's no hard evidence that we can relate to, because there's evidence out there that we'll see and be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's great, but I don't see how that relates to me. And But when you can take and say, hey, this real estate agent over here doing this many sides, changed this, then went to this many sides, people go, oh, wow, that's like where I'm, I am now. So you're saying that can be me? Then you create that unlock, which I'm, you're about to go into and explain. Well, yeah, I will here. And in the, I think the, the fun part is, is I like it when you cross somebody's belief system. Like I said, said to somebody the other day, I said, oh, so-and-so made a million dollars in one year. And, and I just happened to slip out that it was a husband and wife team. And instantly the agent jumps on it and goes, oh, but that, that they're a team, that's different. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but you don't know the team. The team is a husband and wife that's really trying to be one perfect real estate agent. They're not out there trying to do a double income. They're not out there, you know, each forwarding 50 people, each writing 10 notes, each doing two lunches, each doing two real estate reviews. No, they've got the normal amount of the systems. They've got the same database that everybody else has. You know, he handles getting the listings together while she's out there making the phone calls. There's, it's not like a doubled up business. But the belief system says, oh, well, that's why they can do it. And all of a sudden, it like makes their world okay. That was kind of a side note. So the re- thing that happened this last week that really got me going is I was talking with an agent that I coached named Dave Pepin. Dave um, is fascinating. I've coached Dave for a handful of years. Um, I think if I go back, I think we're like four or five years into this relationship. Dave came into coaching doing about 35 sides a year and wanted a stronger business. He's in Sioux City, Iowa wanted a stronger business, wanted to build a more referral-based business. He was getting his business through lots of other avenues. He really wasn't have, doing any referrals to begin with. He launched into Ninja. He loved it. We gave him all the systems. He ran with it. What has always caught my attention about him is he quickly moved up to about 80 sides a year. Okay, Now, there's a lot of people that I'll share 80 sides a year, and their first thing that comes out of their mouth is, I don't want to work that hard. You ever have people say that when you start talking about those big numbers, Matt? Oh, absolutely. They're like, uh, or they say, that's not possible. I don't have enough time. Yeah. There's not enough time in the day to do 80 sides. And he's a guy that travels with his family. He's got young kids. You know, He's got a lovely wife. They go and see the world. And they, he does have the free time to go do all this stuff. And a lot of people then say, well, he must have a team. He's got like a part-time assistant. He's actually dying right now to find an assistant. He thought he had one, and it looks like it's not going to kind of come together. He just has very limited help on certain things. But for the most part, this guy's doing 80 sides on his own. Actually going to do 100 sides this year is what he's on track for. This is where my belief system all of a sudden went, or my internal self-talk, you know, conscious mind said, how does that correlate between somebody doing 80 sides in Sioux City And you take somebody, let's say, from San Francisco. There was a lady that came to me years ago, and she said, uh, she said, I really want to grow my business. She goes, I want to do, I want to make more money. She says, but I don't want to work as hard as I did last year. I said, how many transactions did you do last year? She goes, oh, it was, it was so much work. She goes, I just, I can't handle that many sides. I said, how many sides? (laughs) She says, 13. (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, how much money did you make last year? 350,000. So it's interesting is that, so what I love about these two places is, is that 13 sides equals, you know, 300 plus thousand dollars. You take someone like Dave in Sioux City, Iowa, he's going to make approximately the same amount of money, but has to do 80 to hundred sides. So this is what's always been fascinating to me. How can we get somebody's belief system to understand that the national mobility rate Give or take a couple of percentage points, you know, between about 10 to 15 percent, which means that any given city, any given area has about a 10 to 15 percent of the homes that are going to turn over in the next 12 months. Now, to put that also into perspective, these numbers, they move. They're not a constant. So, you know, I've seen marketplaces that are in that 10 percent range, but because people need to move, all of a sudden, you look at it in a couple of months, you know, a year or so, and all of a sudden, it's way over, let's say, like a 20% range. Um, but that's why a lot of times when you look at a marketplace, I always look at 20, and that makes up for the high side and the low side. Have you heard that stat before, Matt? Yeah. 
anybody can go kind of create this if they want in their own areas by just looking at data for the number of households that exist in their area and the number of homes that sell year after year. Mm -hmm. By knowing that, that tells me that in a market like San Francisco, what in the world would happen if somebody actually did 100 sides? What would that look like? And I think this is where the belief system comes in because we get into our herd mentality. We start looking around the office and going, okay, so what is good? Somebody who's doing a really good business. Well, I know over there, Sally did 13 sides last year and that was really good. Like she made some good money, but they have nothing to relate it to of somebody doing 100 sides. There's no correlation. It doesn't even make sense. It's so far out of the realm of reality. And this is what I have over the years been, I've been really wanting to unlock. And the hard part is you get most people in those bigger, higher end selling price areas. And their first thing out of their mouth is, I don't want to work that hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, I get it. I don't want you to work that hard. <laughs> what if we unlock half of it? Yeah. Even a, a fraction, a percentage. I mean, taking going from 13 sides in a place like San Francisco to 20 when you think about this, I like always like to relate it to something, you know, sports analogies always come around. And this was a big block back in the mid 1900s with the four minute mile. No one thought it could be done. Couldn't be done. No way. And then in 1954, Roger Bannister did it. And since then, it's been broken over 1400 times. In competition. What's cool, too, if you look about it, it look when he did that and it was made national news, the amount of people within weeks that went and broke it was like astronomical. There was a huge amount of people right after he did it that, that all of a sudden their mindset said, oh, it's possible. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. That's where a lot of people get stuck is they get in their mind of going, how can I make sense of this? Because in my world, that doesn't make sense. And they start throwing things in there like they must have a team. Oh, but there's probably this going on. Or, oh, that's a two-agent income. I totally get it. And I think it's important that we stop and we listen to our belief system. And very few people do it. I, I do it all the time. I love it when I hear something crazy come out of my mouth that I have decided is reality. <laughs> and I'm like, where the hell did that come from? And I'll write it down. Matt knows this about me and some people do, but I have a, um, a large slider, glass slider door that goes out to my backyard and I write everything on it that kind of comes to my mind. I just, I'm constantly writing on this. I've got multiple color dry erase markers. Black shows up the best if any of you guys ever want to do this. And again, I'll hear belief systems come out of my mouth and I'll stop and I'm like, whoa, like, did you hear that one? Like, I might, I might have a problem now. I talk to myself all the time like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, be like, whoa, like, where did that come from? And I'll write it out. And then I personally try to decipher why in the world I decided that that was my reality. That's important. I think more people should talk to themselves uh, like that, <laughs> though. <laughs> because you're, you're absolutely right that we have this belief system that's ingrained in our non-conscious brain that's just there saying, hey, this is what we do. And when something comes and challenges that, it's not an emotional... I mean, it comes out as an emotional reaction, but your brain is just creating it as a, hey, no, this is what we do. If we don't stop and take a this over this overhead view of that step outside of our own brain for a second and stop and just pause and think with the conscious brain and go backwards and say wait is that really can we change that i mean that may be what our reality is now but does that mean it has to be our reality for tomorrow that's exactly what you're talking about here right with taking a pause and just asking yourself whoa where'd that come from how can we analyze this and change this yeah, I am saying that. And what I'm finding usually is for me, what works best is I love to find out where it came from. Mm. Like what, what developed this thing? Was it an event that happened in my life? Was it some well-meaning person that said, oh, this is the way the world works? Was it a, a, you know, a manager? Was it a webinar that I listened to? Was it a podcast that I listened to that said, oh gosh, you know, or was it sitting at a sales meeting and because the only sales meetings I've ever been to have always brought up a top producer to the front of the room that has done 10 sides a year. And I went, wow, that's got to be, that's really good. That, they call him a top producer in our office. I'm not bashing anybody for being a top producer at 10 sides. But if they build a belief and a reality around that, and then they hear somebody that's doing 100 sides, all the wires cross. And they're like, that's not possible. That can't be done. That can't, can't work that way. At the same time, Matt, we hear people all the time that when we start putting in new systems, they'll say, yeah, you know, the phone's always been really difficult for me. When I hear that one, I'm like, where did you decide that? 
that's not a normal thing that the phone is difficult for somebody. So I'll have people write that down. And usually what I'll do is I'll have them write down and they'll ask them, are you okay with this reality or would you like it to be different? That's usually, this is, again, this is what I do with myself when I'm talking to myself, writing on my window. You know, where did this thing come from? Am I okay having this reality? Would I like it to be different? And what would I like it to be? And one of my favorite sayings is the future is all made up. Ooh, I like that. My dad gave that to me years and years and years ago. And he said, the future's all made up. The next moment in time is all made up. What do you want it to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to create? And if you find limiting beliefs in there, we need to fix those if they're not taking you to the future that you want. You know, if you decide you're not good on the phone, great. Do you want to hold on to that? Do you want to overcome it? Do you want to see if we can build a different reality in there? Do you want to learn some new tools? Because that's the cool thing. When you lock on to a bad belief, you can't even see the tools that will help you have a different result. They don't exist. Exactly. They, 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 people create this goal of like, no, this is what I want things to be, but I don't believe that it's possible, but I want it to be here, but I don't believe it's possible, but I want it to be there, but I don't believe it's possible. And it's like, well, then we're going nowhere. You're just going to have this goal that's out there that you're just constantly going to be disappointed about never achieving because you believe that it's not possible. Well, and this goes back to where we first started this. And I said, you know, the three things that Larry mentioned to me about why Ninja won't work. And it's one of the most fascinating things because you can give somebody all the systems. You know, you can show them all the tools and all the stuff. And some people, it won't work at all. They will get zero referrals. And it's not because they're a bad agent. It's not because, you know, they're doing the systems wrong. It's because they have an internal belief system that says, why would somebody want to refer me? Yeah. Why am I that special? Why am I that good? Why I mean, they're going to refer other people? I mean, that's or oh, have you ever had somebody say, you know, I think gen in general, people don't want to work with their friends. They value their relationship too much to bring business into it. Oh, my goodness. This is this is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. I can't. I don't want to mix business with friends and family. Ugh. Yes. And I've heard people think that that's a real thing, that there's a belief out there that the whole society doesn't want to do that. And I'm like, that that's not what I see every single day. No. <laughs> typically, typically what I find is people like working with their friends. Yeah. I, most of my business was with my friends. When I was actively listing and selling in New Jersey, I loved working with my friends. Some of the best transactions. So we got to listen to these beliefs. And uh, everybody's got their own batch. But there's, there's, um, there's beliefs that will build you and grow you and allow you to be better than you were the day before. And then there are limiting and basically destructive beliefs. Those are the ones we want to pay attention to. And those are the ones we want to put out there in the open. Because literally, like I should say, they're not all bad. Uh, there's just a limiting belief could be about the amount of sides that, you, that the, a normal person can do in a year. A limiting belief could be about to be able to do that many sides, I would have to give up my family time and I would not be able to travel and I would all of a sudden be working days and nights and weekends. Those are all beliefs. Or even stronger than that too is um, people who want to get to a new income goal, but believe that they're not worthy of that. Oh, well, that's not for me. Yeah. Other people get to have that success. Right. You know, in talking about this, okay, so here's here are all the ways that people can limit their beliefs, right? So I think when we talk about it in a way, it's, it's kind of fun because we put it out there, we get to discuss this, and it sounds simple, right? It is, And it is simple, but it's not easy to change. It's It can be hard, but that's the beauty of actually working through it because when you have the breakthrough, it's like, oh, this was all worth it. All of a sudden, so many more things get opened up and you start to recognize other opportunities that maybe you never even thought of because now the belief system says I can and I will and it is possible and anything can happen to me and good things happen. Well, you, Garrett, you shared one of your affirmations and, and I don't want to go down necessarily the track of talking about affirmations, although it are it is related to the belief system. Oh, yeah. You said one of your affirmations that you um, carry with you daily, year to year is that good things happen to me every day. Mm -hmm. And I love that one because I think a lot of people wake up and say, oh, today's going to today's gonna suck. And it does. Well, all it takes is you get out of bed and stubbing your toe on the side of the bed, and you're like, oh, crap, it's going to be one of those days, huh? Right. <laughs> and you own it, and it keeps coming and dishing more and more out as you go through the day to kind of you know make that belief system stand true. Yeah. But I think we also all know those people 
that you like look at them and you say, like, you know what? Every they're just so lucky. All the good stuff happens to that person. And usually, when you talk to those people, they're just like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just great. You know, every day I wake up, it's another it's another day in paradise, as Larry Kendall likes to say. And they just live that way, and they're like, oh yeah, things happen. I don't know how they do. I think they do know how though. Well, I want to go back to something you said a second ago, Matt. What you said is that you know this. It sounds like we're talking about it's oh, it's okay, so it's easy to change these belief systems, you know, when you find them. And and you know, this is, could be one of my beliefs talking here real quickly. So that's just what's fun is you could overanalyze this to death. You all of a sudden <laughs> making a judgment about something like, well, God, is that a belief? Like, I don't know. Maybe I could be looking at this totally different. But what I've found is is that when I acknowledge a limiting belief. It's not like I sit there and go, let's write it up. Let's analyze this. And like an hour later, I'm like, that one's done. Let's move on. Let's create something cool now. It is something that for me, it's like, a, okay, now I, I need to be paying attention to that because that limiting belief is coded into me. And from my research in the books that I've read is that code is always there. It doesn't go away. Your brain remembers everything it's ever seen, thought about, heard. It is programmed into there and is locked into stone. The beliefs that show up are the ones that have more power behind them or are louder. And so I've always looked at it as when I find those limiting beliefs, I need to then say, okay, well, what is it that I want to see? And this goes into the affirmations. And I will then crank the new belief up and make it so loud, so in my face, I can't get away from it. I mean, I turn it into like a, a chant. I'll turn them into a, like a song sometimes, and I'll start singing it throughout my days to try to soften that old belief, because whichever one's louder is what I'm going to see on my days. That's like when I find myself in a rut, that great things happen to me every day, that thing turns into a wonderful song I sing throughout the whole day. And what do you know? You find it all over the place. Yeah. Oh, and and I also want to acknowledge that I had put out a limiting. Uh, I also it's want a to. Big, it's a big word. <laughs> it's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put out there that I I want to acknowledge that I put out there a limiting belief. Just talking about this by saying it's simple, but it's hard. And <laughs> that's my own belief. This can get really fun analyzing our own thoughts right here live, but. It can be hard and it can be easy. So I do want to say that. I don't want, I don't want to say that changing your belief system is always hard. It all, it's all relative to you. And um, what you were saying about your brain storing everything, if you think about it like that we now experience with search engines and uh, anytime you watch videos on YouTube and you have recommended videos or when you start typing in things in the search engines and it tries to automatically finish it based on your last searches, that's the way your brain works, basically. It's just filling in more recall based on what you've been asking it over time. And so when you try to ask it something different, it doesn't immediately pop up. When you are looking at, um, Garrett, you're into cars, when you're going on YouTube, looking at all of these instructional videos on cars, on people you know, doing work and how to do this, and then all of a sudden you want to go on YouTube and find a video about baking cookies, for example, it's not going <clears> to <throat> pop up there for you. You're going to have to physically go in and type it without it ever auto-filling it in for you because it's new. It's like, you've never asked for this. I don't know what to do for you. Yes. But then once you ask it, it'll start to give you something. But then yes. you have to go through more and more things and then it'll just start automatically popping up. And then all of a sudden you'll get cars and baking, both. And there you go. And that's how your brain works. A way it was explained to me years ago that really kind of made sense. We, when we're looking at stuff, our line of vision, all of us have this, by the way, there's a part of your vision that is blocked out, that it's literally a blind spot. We all have it. We have it in both of our eyes. And the way the images come in and they reflect through the lens, they get turned upside down, they shine on the back of the, you know, the back of the eye, and your your brain says, okay, this is what I can see in my field of vision. Well, there's a part of it that can't, and it's where the optic nerve is attached. That spot of your vision is actually a blind spot. And what happens is your brain says, okay, I'm gonna take my belief system. And I'm going to take this negative space of sight that I can't see something here, and I'm going to fill in the gaps with what I hold true that that should look like. So I'm looking out my back window right now at a whole bunch of trees. Well, wherever this blind spot is, my brain has said, yeah, we're just going to put in some happy little trees in that spot right there for <laughs> you. And you'll never know. 
(laughs) (laughs) It's true. And that's, that literally is our belief system saying, I'm going to try to protect you. I'm going to try to see if I can fill in the gaps here. And I'm going to show you things that fit this picture of what we think we're supposed to be seeing. For me, that was always like, okay, this is our, this is how our brain is constantly going in the background. Going back to this and how we started this was was talking about, you know, somebody doing it in a ridiculous amount of sides. And I get to see people do that all the time. I get to see people that do, you know, I've got numerous people that do over 100 transactions. The highest one I have, she works with a part-time assistant and she does 165 sides a year. She's done it for like, in, in a town of 4,500 people, presses with that also, surrounded by cornfields. Mobility right there is very high. <laughs> <laughs> So you've got some, you know, I get to watch people like that, and then I have people that are struggling to find 28 sides in Seattle or in Boulder, Colorado, or in, you know, and you're like, well, what's the difference? Why can this guy over here unlock all these sides, and you're just trying to find 24 with the same size database? What is getting in your way? And nine times out of ten. It is your internal belief system that says, this is the, what I know as reality out there, and this is what I'm going to show you. And I'm going to encourage everybody out there, open up your thoughts and your ideas, open up your perceptual map, and stop looking at your neighbor. You know, Stop looking at the people around us to, to try to build what we want to see as our reality and say, okay, this is normal, and say, no, what do I want to create? Because if you were an agent in Seattle, and you did 100 signs in the next 12 months selling, you know, let's say $800,000 homes, that would be a miracle. People would literally look at you and go, that is an absolute miracle. How in the world did they do that? But there's no difference than that happening to somebody doing it in a little teeny market in the Midwest. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And there are people in those markets doing that amount of transactions. You all can look them up in your MLS. I'm sure there's a way to do it to look to see who's doing what if you need validation of who's doing what and hold your judgment. Like Garrett said, I think this is the most important thing. Hold your judgment on anything because you don't really know how other people operate their businesses and they're not operating it the way you would operate their business. And so hold your judgment on things. Just know that it is possible. And when you start creeping in a, I can't, or that's not for me, Take a moment and just look back and say, wait a minute. And Garrett, I love the exercise that you put out there is just say, okay, take a moment, write down what it was, ask where it came from, and then ask yourself, is this something that I would like to move forward with? Is this something that I'm okay with continuing? And you know what? If the answer is yes, that's okay too. If it's like, you know what? I'm cool with doing 13 sides actually. Great. Awesome. Keep doing 13 sides. But if you want to do 15, go do 15 and know that you're going to do 15. You know, this actually combines well, and I think there's no way we could fit all of this into just one you know, podcast, but if everybody listens to when we talked about your finding your why and other podcasts that we'll rec- record about other things that relate to the belief system in terms of how you set your mindset up to take appropriate action and building in vision boards and other things and affirmations and gratitudes and all these other things that we can spend plenty of time talking about. The belief system is at the core, though, because if your belief system is set up properly and your mindset is on point, you will take action and the results you will see. It sounds like Yoda. <laughs> That was very Yoda-like. Yeah. (laughs) You will take action and the results you will see. All right. I love it. So, yeah. So, Matt, that's why I wanted to bring this to to our uh, podcast today because, again, I think that um, especially in coming off talking about your why, you know, it it just – it's such a thing that allows you to – be able to really think big and dream big or sit there and, and tone everything back down so it feels safe. Yeah. That's, that's just, it's, we're always trying to fight or, and fight or work with this belief system. But, um, and it's going, and like you said, Garrett, when we were talking about finding your why, the belief system is there to protect you too. The reason why you get limited sometimes is because it's your brain trying to protect you. There's a fear of change and it's trying to protect you. And once you get it comfortable with knowing that the next thing's going to be awesome, then it's all of a sudden going to accelerate you and you'll get to another point where you're going to have to break through it again. And this is why I say, no matter where you are in your business, whether you're at 50,000 in net income or 500,000 in net income, trying to go to the next level, it's the same process on breaking through that current belief system and setting up a new one and knowing that the future is limitless. 
and that you can create it today in your own head. I just said real quick, I know we, we probably could just again keep going with this map, but I, I had I had an agent this two weeks ago and we ran into the belief system and then the belief system basically had said, and she, she acknowledged it very quickly. She said, you know what it is? She goes, I don't see myself as somebody that would be somebody's professional. She said, you know, I don't, I don't see myself as the type of person that people would come to for answers and things like that. And so here she is doing all the systems and doing all the stuff, but she has this picture in her mind that, that why would anybody come to me? Why would anybody want my opinion? Why would anybody want my advice? I'm, I'm not the type of person that helps people out. And again, those are the types of things that will just, sometimes they will kill a business and sometimes they will just drastically limit a business. So that's what I want people thinking about out there. And when you find that stuff, overanalyze it, analyze it to death. I have done it so many times where all of a sudden I'm going, where did this come from? And all of a sudden a teacher's face will pop into my mind. I'm like, oh gosh, freshman year German. That's my teacher that popped into my mind. And she said this to me. And why did I give her that much power? Well, because back then she was an authority figure. Like she had smart, she had knowledge, she was an adult. And here I am holding on to that belief still today, which now I'm looking at as going, that's totally bogus. Why did she do that? Why did she give that to me? You know, and this is one thing also for people to watch out for when you are talking to your managers and, you know, the, your brokers in charge and the other people who you sit down with at your company to do whatever it is in terms of planning and setting goals and stuff is don't listen to them when they also give you a limiting belief. I heard this from someone saying, look, well, you can't just start in the luxury market. You have to work your way up. It doesn't just happen for you. And I'm like, <laughs> well, why not? I mean, yeah, there are certain... I. I I get it. It all depends on if you know people in your database and things like that. But there's no reason why you can't just get into real estate. And if you have a good, strong database that happens to be in the luxury real estate market, whatever that means in your area, go sell luxury real estate. And I had a client this week, too, that was saying she wants to go to a different price point. She said, you know, but I don't think I can do it. You know, I don't think the people in that price point value my knowledge and my expertise as much as people in this other price point. We explored it and I said, well, how many people in your database are in this price point? We went over that and I said, well, how many, what percentage of those people do you actually enjoy talking to that you think value your services? And she said about 30, 40%. I was like, that's amazing. That's a, so then talk to those people, forget the other ones, let them be confirmation that they value your services and go continue to sell in that price point. Yeah. There's nothing holding you back because you are, and this is what everybody needs to understand out there, is you are a proactive real estate advisor. That's what we teach through Ninja Selling. Mm -hmm. And that your services, as long as you, I mean, there's a lot of other specifics and semantics that can go into with it. But if you're a professional, proactive real estate advisor, you can help people at any price point in any area in any market. You're right with the uh, other people's belief systems. And I, again, I, I, love, I mean, I get to hear them all day long. We both do, Matt. We get to talk to people and their belief systems come screaming out at us. And my, one of my favorite sayings, my dad, I, I've got tons of stuff from my dad over the years. He's basically mentored me ever since I was an infant. But when a limiting belief comes up from somebody, my favorite thing to say is, well, if you say so. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone says, you know, it, gosh, it takes forever to build that luxury business out there. Well, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, n none of this ever came easy for anybody. Well, okay, if you say so. You know, building a database is really hard, and you got to get out there, and it's going to take years and years and years to go, you know, build a good database. Well, th those are all people's belief systems. Yeah, I say that to myself now. Whenever I, that's how I check my limiting beliefs. As I say, well, you know what? If you say so, that's what will be. Um, I've gotten in trouble saying that to to people, and you could probably guess who you'd get in trouble saying something like that too. But. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've had moments where I want to experiment. Believe me, everybody listening, I would never, ever, ever do this. But so I have three children and I've had moments where I'm like, I can create them any way I want to. Do you imagine the crazy things that I could put in there and build belief systems around for them? Of course, I have used all my powers for good over the years. I have you know, helped them build strong belief systems of power and positivity. And But uh, I've had moments where I'm like, be weird if you like took one of them and just had them see the world in a totally off kilter way, like created some wild belief that really had no bearing whatsoever. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. I am, I am an authoritative figure to them. I'm the one who can create a child's belief system. 
And if I want to tell them that this crayon's green when it's really red, I can mess with them. And it's no different than this is all the beliefs that you guys have started just the same way. If somebody holding up a a green crayon at some point saying this is a green crayon and you went, okay, my belief system now says that crayon's green. And I'm going to go forward the rest of my life believing that this crayon's green. And that's everything that you hold as a belief system is built the exact same way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you bring up our experiences when we're children because that is is what shapes everything. With you studied psychology, so uh, I didn't, <laughs> so I really have no like to stand on. But like you want, you know, that's why whenever people you know talk to people in in therapy sessions, they try to go back to their childhood because that's typically when something gets put inside you that is hard to identify and extract objectively today as an adult, but that's what's setting up the belief system for something going on. And once you can acknowledge that, and part of it too is just acknowledging and accepting that this is what's currently our belief system and saying, you know what, that's okay because we can change it. And then you'll be able to move on. It sets acknowledgement of those things and self-awareness in a way, which is why it's important to bring it back to what you said at the beginning, Gary, is to stop when you hear yourself blurting out a negative belief because you have to take a moment and accept and acknowledge that so that you can then change it. Because if you don't acknowledge it, it's going to be really, well, I don't want to put another (laughs) belief out there, but you know where I'm going with this. On the Monday morning agenda, we have a a space in there that says aha moments that I have an aha moment this last week. And the reason I put that on the Monday morning agenda is because I don't like people having aha moments more than once. It's like having an aha moment that when I do this, I get incredible referrals. And then four months later, writing it again, going like, hey, I did that again and I got great referrals. I was an aha. It's like, stop having that be an aha. Turn that into your normal. Well, when I hear a negative belief, that's an aha moment for me or a limiting belief. And that's like, okay, this is a moment. I have a moment here to work with this because in our monkey brains that we have, in 20 minutes, I will have forgotten this and moved along. And I'm now doing something else in my day. Now I'm running to go get kids. Now I'm running to go get the dogs from chasing something in the backyard. That little moment is gone. So that's like for me, that's why probably just my attention deficit disorder. But on my window, that's why I go run. I write it down because that's that little aha moment I was able to grab and say, okay, I can come back to that now. I can analyze it now. It's been locked in time. And let's go figure this thing out. That's how I play with it. So I'm just going to encourage everybody. That's, you know, that's a way that works for me. Get a piece of paper. But the, the other thing too, and we can just keep going here, Matt, but another thing too, at some point when you acknowledge what it is, you need to erase it and let it go. Um, you can't leave it up there. Like I would never leave that up there for months on my window, but I would come back to it. I would analyze it, figure out what it was, where it came from. Do I want to hold on to it? Do I want to put a new belief in its place? And I got to let it go. If you write it down on a piece of paper, destroy the piece of paper at some point. You don't want just to keep coming back to that and holding on to it. Uh, you don't want a whole book of limiting beliefs, let's say. Like I don't want a binder of all my limiting beliefs I've ever had. That would be like the book of hell. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be horrible. <laughs> and the act so, of the act of getting rid of that too can be really can be really great in helping the process of changing the belief system too. I think so. I like that of writing it down and then you know obviously taking the time to marinate on it and then destroying it. And maybe you have some type of you know a celebration that you do. Maybe you like to tear it up and throw it in the trash, or you put it in the shredder, or you light it on fire in a safe place, not outside in Northern California on a dry fall day. Um, <laughs> please do not do that. <laughs> you hear of any new fires out there? It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean that's I, the most satisfying I've ever satis- satisfaction I've had with limiting getting rid of those beliefs is actually burning them. I've thrown them on the barbecue. Um, there's it. something very satisfying about watching those words and watching the actual flame move through that pa- piece of paper. And because really, once that fire goes through it, it's really gone. Like it's gone, gone. That you've got to watch it go away forever. Yeah, it's like a. Whew, Okay, but you got to have something new to put in its place. And that's the big thing. If it's transactions that you want to go after and you hear your limiting belief going, yeah, to do that means I would have to work twice as hard and I'm not willing to do that. Well, that's a limiting belief. Write that one down. Why in the world do I think I have to work twice as hard? What in the, who gave me that idea? You know, and let's write something new out and let's move on with that and then burn that thing. Let's get rid of that. That doesn't have to be my reality. 
All right, man. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we can go on this topic forever. So what we would really like is to hear from you all on this one. If you've had some breakthroughs or if maybe there's some, you know, beliefs in there that you're struggling to to get out, you know, maybe just sharing them with someone might help. So feel free to share them with us. You can email us. You can write either me or Garrett. It's uh, matt at ninjacoaching.com or garrett at ninjacoaching.com or just go to ninjacoaching.com and find us there and, and share what your guys' thoughts are on this with us um, because we would love to hear it and really champion and celebrate your successes and help you through some of the struggles as well. So thank you all for listening. Appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you for joining us here on the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast. We appreciate your time and attention. If you receive some value out of this episode, we would love for you to share it, subscribe to the podcast, and if you feel so compelled to leave us a review. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon.